Well, welcome to the attic. Uh, this is the uh, circuit I used to uh, do some cooking with. Uh, it's fairly simple. You have a 47K and a 10K pot, and that samples the voltage from the uh, solar panel. It's a 100 watt solar panel that goes into the gate. Uh, source is connected to the common and it has a pull up of 3k uh, when I did the test I had uh, a 10k in there and uh, that was way too high to uh, pull up this 1k resistor as we saw the uh, boost converter would stop working at about 10 volts that's to protect the FET and the boost converter and uh, so at like below 17 volts uh, the boost converter was allowed to uh, put the solar panel into a death spiral and so the voltage dropped a bit uh, I've corrected that to 3k so I mean if we want to sample well that's not correct <laughs> No, it is. So, uh, yeah, this 3K, so if this input voltage gets down below 17 volts, uh, when it was 10K, it could not pull up that 1K resistor that this is the uh, boost converter up to two, over 2.5 volts uh, to turn it off. So it really needed to be around 3K. Very convenient convenient here 2.5 volts is uh you know one quarter of uh 10 volts so 1k 3k so that's four 1k resistors pretty and i uh i had uh two 10k resistors in parallel but i had to take and put one of the 10ks over here i just hadn't brought enough 10k resistors with me you know 10k is a nice value to have i buy them uh you know a box of a thousand and uh, parallel them up serial them it's just a easy way to adjust things up but the FET is any kind of FET and you could do a TL431 in this but you would have to probably put a uh, an LED in series with this that would give it another 1.8 volts voltage drop a TL431 would only drop to about 2 volts so at two volts, well, that would be enough, but uh, be nice having the LED in there just to uh, have things show up. So let me show you this work right now. We're at uh, 17.2 volts and we're doing a pass through right through the uh, rectifiers of this. Remember the input voltage goes through the coil and goes through the coil and through this diode so if you fully turn the buck converter off it's just a pass-through going through and that's what we have right now I'm at 17.2 volts and we got 16.7 volts out that's the voltage drop of the uh, diode the forward voltage so each one of these clicks is a tenth of a volt okay 17.3, 17.4, and we're starting to liven up here. So at 18.1 volts, we get the full output going to the heater, and you can see it's 72.56, so yeah. In this rough calculation, 17, uh, the uh, power supply says 86.3 and I found that to be fairly accurate so we're at 83% 84% efficient so uh, you're losing 16% and uh, you know if you're trying to gain a little bit of power that can be a tough one sometimes but when it goes into shutoff like I say it's a direct pass through so you're only developing uh, 12.45 
watts into the uh, heating element and uh, that's a you know a direct connect so it, at 12 watts there's not much to be saved and uh, the part you really worry about is you know getting over 40 50 watts but that's the circuit again it's fairly simple just a FET, two resistors, and a diode. And what you do is you can go on the pot and look for a resistance reading to uh, ground, to the common. And uh, it'll be about 1K. Sometimes they're 2 point, uh, you know, 250 ohms. But uh, measure the voltage of the one of the pins. The one that's lowest should be about 2.5 volts. If they put this resistor on the other side of the pot, uh, then there's a little bit of a problem. You have to search to where that resistor is and where it goes to this pin. But it's a, a fairly easy way to control a buck converter or a boost converter. Uh, I use this a lot. I do this with uh, standard power supplies. I just uh, go in there and modify the feedback loop because what we're doing is we're faking this uh, switching power switching regulator chip into thinking that there's an over voltage and it turns it off.